What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about BioNanogenomics, ticker symbol BNGO. Now, I've seen some rumors circulating around the internet that Citadel has a short position on BioNanogenomics, and that was one of the reasons that we saw BioNanogenomics fall uh, such a significant amount in the month of March. So we're going to go over all of the evidence for and against if uh, BioNanogenomics is involved in any of this short squeeze dilemma. And we are also going to go over some key events that BioNanogenomics has coming up in its near future. So before we get into all of that information, if you guys would like to earn two free stocks with Weeble valued up to $1,850, make sure you check out that link down below in my description. All you have to do is sign up for an account, deposit over $100, and you get two free stocks. Now, this is also a great way if you guys would like to help out and support the channel because when you get two free stocks, I get a free stock as well. And if you guys enjoy the information and analysis that I provide for you in these videos, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it helps me out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people as possible. And again, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video so you get to stay up to date on all of your favorite stocks, learn about a couple of new ones, and see exactly which options I am trading and which strategies I am using to trade them. So at the time that I'm recording, Recording this video, it has concluded the after hours trading period on April 5th. Bio Nanogenomics on this day went up 4.34% and fell about 0.86% in the after hours trading period. So, this was a good day for Bio Nanogenomics after having somewhat of a weak week last week. Now, we did see a little bit of a pop. We've seen some uh, severe volatility in Bio Nanogenomics. We've seen really green days and really red days. But if you have confidence in this company over over the long term, I don't think you really have anything to be worried about. We were in this company super early and, and we're still sitting at basically a double from where we started talking about this company on this channel. And I know a lot of you guys were able to get in earlier. Now, nothing I say in these videos is financial advice. These are for educational and entertainment purposes only, but I have confidence in bio nanogenomics for the long term. And I know a lot of you guys do as well. So there's no need, in my opinion, to freak out about these short term dips. So let's get into this short interest situation and see if bio nanogenomics could be the target of a short attack by one of these hedge funds. So when we come over to Finviz, this is gonna be our first data source for the short percentage of float. We can see that here, it, they have it at 8.6%. That is nothing to freak out about. Anything can, uh, over 20% is considered abnormally high. But when we come over to MarketBeat, we see that the percentage of shares shorted over here, they say it's 15.2%. That is a massive difference in the data that we are seeing. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, the key thing that I've been bringing up is that since there's a massive difference in the actual short interest numbers being reported on all of these different sites, it suggests to me that we really can't know what the actual and true short interest is. Now, there is um, a couple of explanations for this. Uh, it could be the difference in the last record date. So we see here it's March 15th, 2021. And for Finviz, it could be a different date. So the second reason why I think that there is such a disparity in the short interest percentage uh, as seen across all of these different sites and data sources is that if you look at how the short interest is represented and reported, it's self-reported by all of these institutions. We actually saw something last week in Turkey. A lot of these institutions were fined over their actions of misreporting their short interest numbers, and the fines are only a million dollars. That is nothing to these hedge funds. So they actually have, um, they're doing a cost benefit analysis and it's benefiting them to directly come out and lie about how many shares that they are shorting, which creates a very interesting situation and we cannot know what the actual short interest is going to be. Now, before we get into the kind of big bombshell that's been put out on the internet, I want to show you guys a story from an article called The Anatomy of a Short Attack and this was back in 2014. This article essentially goes through all of the different things that these institutions will do in order to push the share price of a stock down. Now, what's very interesting here is that we see Global Links Corporation is an example of how wholesale counterfeiting of shares will decimate a company's stock price. Global Links is a company that provides computer services to the real estate in industry. By early 2005, 
their stock price had dropped to a fraction of a cent. At that point, investor Robert Simpson purchased 100% plus of Global Link's 1.1 million issued and outstanding shares. He immediately took delivery of his shares and filed the appropriate forms with the SEC, disclosing that he owned all of the company's stock. His total investment was $5,205. The share price was 0.00434. Now, here's the important part. The day after he acquired all of the company's shares, the volume on the -the over-the-counter market was 37 million shares. Now, how is that possible if one individual owns every single share? The following day saw 22 million shares changed hands. So that's essentially where this naked shorting comes in. And some people are blowing some of these numbers here out of proportion. So we can see that this is going to be the bio nano genomics over the counter non alternative trading systems data and the total shares traded in the last trading period is going to be about 1.5 billion shares and Citadel is at the top. Now everybody's kind of freaking out because Citadel has been at the forefront and the core of the GameStop and AMC situation. So when you see Citadel at the top for all of these stocks, it's it, it creates a lot of fear in people and they get the wrong idea about what is happening. You have to remember that one, this number right here is the total volume of shares traded. So this is buys and sells. We do not know if these shares are being held by Citadel, if they're being shorted and held on the books, or if they're just trades carried out on behalf of the Robin Hoods, Weebles, and the other brokers of the world. What this information really tells us is that there's a lot of trading going on that is away from the public eye. That's really all it tells us, and it could suggest that the short interest is higher than we expect, or there is something else going on. So now what I would expect to see out of bio nanogenomics options activity, if there were some very uh, iffy things going on uh, and there was naked shorting and the short interest was really high, I would expect to see very unusual deep in the money call activity. So when we come over to option sonar, we can see that the $8 strike, which is which if we come over to the share price of bio nanogenomics is just slightly in the money. And we can see that the volume on this, the calls 128,000. When we come over to March 31st, this might take a second, but we can see that these $8 strikes again only had a volume of 74,000. Now, the reason I would expect to see such high volume on these in the money calls is that uh, when when these institutions need to uh, fake and make it look like they've closed and covered their short position, they will do some buy right trades with these in the money calls. So it looks like they have covered their short position, but it really just buys them more time and allows them to keep their short open. We are not seeing that with bio nanogenomics, which suggests to me that this is just your everyday average short interest in a company that is going on. So that that it's really nothing uh, to freak out about. And we come back over to the chart of bio nanogenomics. Everything fell in March. Everything that was high growth took a massive hit. So I don't think there's any reason to freak out about what is going on with the -the over-the-counter market activity. This happens all the time. If you look at some other stocks, Citadel is typically at the top as well. So now let's get into some of these new catalysts that are coming up in bio nanogenomics future and a very good article that was released about them that I don't think a lot of you guys have seen. So when we come over to bio nanogenomics Twitter page, Dr. Viola Alessi presented a clinical validation study of Sapphire for genetic disease testing. She presented multiple cases where Sapphire identified several types of structural variants, which had not been done on any other single platform. That's always what we've seen. It's the theme that we've seen with the Sapphire over the past six month, months, the Sapphire is able to detect things that no other mo- uh, model or method can, which sets bio nanogenomics ahead of all of these other companies, in my opinion. Now, when we come down a little bit further, we can see bio nanogenomics. We are thrilled to, ex- uh, to exhibit at the AACR, which is the American Academy for Cancer Research annual meeting, April 10th through April 15th. So let's see exactly what this is going to be. The AACR annual meeting program dis- uh, covers the latest discoveries across the spectrum of cancer research from population science and prevention to cancer biology, translational and clinical studies to to survivorship and advocacy and highlights the work of the best minds in research and medicine from institutions all around the world. This is going to be an event where we could see new studies released by bio nanogenomics. And anytime we see a new study released, we typically see a bullish move in the share price. Uh, We've seen this time and time again, bio nanogenomics 
typically comes out with these studies at these events. And what we usually see is, is the sapphire is able to detect these structural variants in greater uh, ways and detect more of them it, it, more than of any other method can do. Sorry, I stumbled on my words there, but essentially what Sapphire uh, is able to do is what we saw right here. It, it, it's going to be able to detect these structural variants, which had not been done on any other single platform. Now, we also have an article released towards the end of March that really helps give us some more insight into where bionanogenomics is headed in the future. So 2021 is going to be critical to our long-term growth, said the CEO during a conference call this week to discuss the company's fourth quarter and full year 2020 financial results. We are squarely focused on driving the global development of sapphire-based assays for use in clinical testing of patients with genetic diseases and hematologic malignancies and on the adoption of sapphire for larger clinical studies that will allow us to obtain a critical mass of data for applications in prenatal and pediatric genetics, leukemias, lymphomas, and solid tumors. The prenatal assays are going to be a significant source of revenue for bionanogenomics in the near future. The thing that we are going to need to keep a lookout for is insurance coverage and what these assays are going to be able to do. Is this going to be a, uh, available to every single person who is pregnant to try to detect any type of disease, or is it going to be for people that may be predisposed to a disease and they just want to figure out if their child is going to have this condition as well. So uh, the CEO said that there are about 2,500 cytogenetics labs in the world, which represent a market opportunity of $3 billion to $3.5 billion per year, including in research. And the total market opportunity for optical genome mapping goes well beyond that low single digit billion dollar amount and is substantially larger, he said. It's harder for us to quantify it specifically, but some of the applications haven't even been developed. Several uh, uh, studies have been already published that have compared optical genome mapping with traditional cytogenetic methods, he said, all showing that the sapphire is a superior alternative. Now, going back to insurance coverage, obtaining reimbursement might be easier in Europe, where the company saw a lot of traction last year. The CEO said BioNano uh, signed region rental agreements with three large children's hospitals in Europe, Spain, Italy, and France in 2020 that are all conducting cytogenetic validation studies with the platform. So as we can see here, BioNano Genomics has an incredible future ahead of it, and I really do think that we are going to see this company be a key player in the genomics market. Now, we haven't seen ARC put any money into this company yet, and I don't really think we need ARC. We had that craze back in the er uh, early days of 2021 where everybody was expecting ARC Invest to put money into bio-nanogenomics, and that didn't end up happening. It is on their radar, as we saw in ARC's uh, Big Ideas report for 2021, but I don't think that we are going to get any money from ARC Invest in the near future, and again, we don't really need it. So that is going to conclude this update on bio-nanogenomics. If you guys enjoyed the information and analysis that I provided for you in this video. Make sure you go down and hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video so you get to stay up to date on all of your favorite stocks, learn about a couple of new ones, and see exactly which options I am trading and which strategies I am using to trade them. So I hope you guys are having a really profitable day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.